Welcome to Vic's Creative Corner. I'm Vic. So I'm glad to have you here. We're going to talk about face cam today. So let's get started. As you can see already, I'm in the software. I'm showing you all the layout because it's basically an intro to using a DSLR, except that it's in video format. Um, I'm not sure what the video industries are, but for streaming, this is big. It's great. And I love what Elgato has done to actually make this very user friendly. Speaking of user friendly, if you have a stream deck, you're able to use these particular keys. Um, the one at the bottom right is to reset everything to factory setting. Um, here is the contrast column, which is orange, and we're going from left to right. Yellow is going to be the contrast. Pink is going to be saturation. And the teal, or what you want to call light blue, is going to be sharpness. And green is zoom. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and uh, play around with the software. Now I already know what my optimal settings are. And I'm going to talk about Chroma Key in OBS very shortly after because that is the program that I use. Now we're going to start with zoom. And for that, I need to actually pull up the green screen because that is what I am currently using. And so we're going we're gonna to open that up here in just a second. I'll be right back. All right, so we've got the green screen up. As you can notice, based on light situations, you might see a little bit of noise going on on the screen. Where you, when you're looking into your camera and you can... I hit my mic. I'm so sorry. You're looking into the camera and you can see like fuzzy stuff happening. That's called noise. Noise reduction is a very wonderful tool and you can set that on there. For me, I don't like it. It's, it's a smoothing feature. I like things to look as natural as possible in the best lighting optimal situations. Because I stream in the dark, and as you can see, those two cages that were behind me, one's a sugar glider and the other has three rats, um, they don't like the light. So I have to work with low light. On top of that, I have blackout curtains, so you know the, the sun beats directly into this area here. And it would be great for lighting, except that I stream at night. So <laughs> I have to work with what I've got. Out of the box, I can tell you the software is great. But what I'm going to do is actually zoom in, or the field of view is going to be what, what the FOV is. But uh, we're going to zoom in. I think I zoomed in too much. No, I didn't. I know what my setting is. And mine is going to be right here, 43.2. That is what I prefer because when I am on my uh, OBS in, in a camera, you're able to see me. All right. And it's just me, nothing else. Right now, you're probably seeing just a little, a little bit of the uh, mic, and that's okay. So contrast. Contrast is going to be where everything goes kind of like flat looking all the way to really dark and, and crisp. Um, sharpness works well with that, but eh, we're going to keep it at 50 because I happen to like the balance and contrast on this camera out of the box. Saturation. Now, if you wanted to look black and white, we can go all the way down to zero and there's no color at all. Or we can go over saturating the colors and uh, look maybe a little brighter, but there's no need for that. 50% out of the box is great. If you want to add the colors, you can actually do filters in OBS. So I would recommend keeping it at 50% unless the coloring is off a bit. Sharpness. Um, I keep it at two because if you go down to one, you look a little blurry, right? It's almost like noise reduction, except that it's not noise reduction. It's just smoothing everything out and causing like a blur effect. If we go all the way down to zero, I'm super blurry. It's kind of like a focusing thing. So we want to look sharp, but not super sharp. And, and as I say that, that's what I'm doing is I'm moving it from three to four. Three to four is going to add more details, but as you can see that it brings in a lot of noise. So for me, two is the sweet spot. And you'll play around with it with your own camera if you buy a face cam or if you buy any webcam really. But really the software is what makes this camera great, not just the sensor on the inside. Um, I know some people were disappointed to hear it didn't come with a microphone. Elgato makes a wonderful Wave 3 microphone, and they're actually bringing VSTs, which I'm learning how to use, by the way. Um, anyways, we're going to, and, and I have to say, Defrag has a really amazing video. He made it super user-friendly, so um, check him out. Anyways, and I'll probably post his link in my video below for those who are interested in VSTs with the Wavelink beta that's out right now. But let's get back to face cam. So we're going to talk about exposure next. Exposure is going to be 
Transferring of light, yes, it went dark. And uh, as far as the transferring of light, this is gonna be how fast it goes through the sensor on shutter speed. So if we go down to 125, that's too dark, right? But we're, we're fluid, we're able to move everything. Now I could compensate for this and bring the ISO up a bit, and I can bring it up to eight, but the truth is I don't actually wanna bring it down to, or up to 800 because then it introduces noise artifacts. So what I'm gonna do is actually bump it up to 64, which I think is optimal with the light settings that I have, which is what I'm gonna talk about next. But I wanna bring the ISO down to about, I don't know, 600. I think 600 is good for this particular camera with my light settings that I have. And the next I'm gonna talk about is white balance. Now I'm turning off automatic. You can keep automatic on and it works great. Like you don't really have to worry about that, but I already have a light setting configuration the way that I want. So I'm gonna actually turn this off. And as you can see how it's blue on the left and more of an orange on the right, that's actually what the temperature is when it comes to white balance. There's always going to be, um, white balance has set specific intervals on numbers when it comes from cooling to warming. And uh, if you do it, if, and if you've ever played with a camera, you're totally understanding what I'm talking about. If you've never played with it, basically it's just gonna make your photo look cool or warm. Like right now we're in a warm light. And as you can see, we're barely scratching the surface of anything warm. So if I wanted to do it super warm, that's how bad it would look. <laughs> but if I wanted to do it cooling, which would actually match with the environment here, the lower I go, the better the photo or the video looks. So for me, I could pull off 38, but I know for myself, it's gonna be 33. That's actually optimal because that's matching, matching for my skin tones. And I like to have things look as natural as possible. Now, you still see noise, and I could do that, and it would look good, but I'm not gonna use noise because I'm actually at optimal settings right now. So I'm gonna save this because this is what I prefer on my device here. Oh, it's saved, okay, good. So I can close this out. Now in OBS, you're gonna select on your camera Oh, I forgot to activate this thing. Hold on one second. There I am. Oh, okay. I, ha I have to redo it. Hold on a second. Ah, it's still doing it. Okay, I have to tweak something in face cam real quick, y'all. See how it says video, video preview occupied? Okay, that's because I activated it in OBS. I have to deactivate it to pop up over here. And there I am. So 623 is still, it's still going to cause a little bit of gain. We're gonna bump it up to 132 and we're gonna save. I had to switch something on the ISO, but I wanted you all to see that. I mean, shutter speed, not ISO. I totally did that backwards, I'm sorry. All right, now I can activate and I should pop up on camera here. And there you go. These are my optimal settings. So as you can see, I have an even distribution of light bouncing off the green screen. I know you guys saw the green screen a moment ago in the other software, right? So for me, I have mine with key lights. Instead of facing the green screen, which would be ideal for me, it also projects a lot of light to the creatures. So that's the reason why I have mine facing the wall and having what is like a wall light bouncing off on my face. Um, one, I don't overheat with the lights, which is great because those lights do get warm. Um, and two, it's not intrusive to my creatures. So this is perfect optimal lighting for me and also for my creatures that live in my office. Now, if you don't have uh, nocturnal creatures living in your office, then you can actually just shine away the lights, make sure that it's balanced evenly across your green screen, and you're not gonna see a lot of noise artifacts like you'd see with mine. And the reason why mine did is because I have the creatures living in my office. Now, the other thing you're gonna notice is when you're in here, you can actually just come to configure video, and you could change some of these things if you wanted to. Well, we've already set them up, in face cam, so honestly, you don't have to actually do anything in here. The next thing we're gonna talk about is filters. Yes, filters. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off color correction and I'm gonna turn off my chroma key. Chroma key out of the box, I'm gonna show you all because this, this I didn't have to actually do anything and I had to actually reconfigure everything 
not too long ago after I switched this out for my Logitech Brio. But we're going to go to Chroma Key. And look at that. The only thing that we really need to tweak is the color, the color spill reduction, which means you don't want that little green ghosting effect. Like if I put my hand here and I move it, you see a green hue, right? We don't want that to happen. So we're going to we're going to up the key color spill so that way it makes the green fade and you can see it as you move, etc. And, and this is how, how the, the green screen works pretty well. So that way, it's just me. There is no background. Now, if I wanted to add a custom background, I could. I really could. It's not hard to do. But that's, that's for a different stream as far as, like, OBS videos, how to add an overlay, that kind of thing. We could do that another time. But, yes, you can technically add a background here while you're having your green screen up. And then if you ever take your green screen down, people see what's actually behind you. All right, so I'm still seeing a little bit of green artifacts as I move my hand. So we might need to go a little higher. Yep, I still see green. I don't know if you all do or don't, but we're going to bump it up to 150. And hmm, let's try 200. Okay, definitely no green. That looks good. Now, color correction. If I turn it on, it looks natural. So I'm going to keep it this way. My settings are, for the gamma, I've reduced it by minus 0 0.20. For me, on contrast, I've done it 0 0.04 because I didn't really want to do too much with the contrast, but I just wanted to make it look enough to where you can see a little bit of detail. And as far as saturation, I did nothing because we played with that in Facecam. So Facecam actually transmits everything that you've saved in the camera over to OBS. So as, as long as you hit the save button, you should be fine. But that's pretty much it. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope this has helped you when it comes to using Facecam. And uh, if you liked what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time.